this is one of those that I am a little apprehensive to share about. I'm calling myself out because I was just sitting here before pressing record procrastinating on creating this video, but it's really, that makes me know it's really, really important. Um, I do tell this story in my best-selling book, You Always Know, and I use this story as an example of a shadow that I had healed or partially healed. Uh, spoiler alert, I'm writing an entire book about friendship breakups and how to heal wounds and attract authentic friends that will hopefully be coming out next year in 2025. So I wanted to start bringing up this type of content and help you if you have been through a friendship breakup. So let me break down how this video is gonna go. First of all, I'm Sierra Rubin. I am a best-selling spiritual author, like I said. I am a singer and I am a psychic empath and I help women tap into their intuition, 10X their confidence, so that you can make decisions from your gut with confidence so that you can move on that trajectory towards the dreams that you actually have in your life, in your finances, in your business. So I'm gonna break this video into three parts. I'm going to just tell the story of what happened between me and this friend, how things started, how it was in the middle, how it fell apart. I'm going to share um, how I healed, how I healed from that. And I'm also going to share uh, what I learned and those might be a little bit interchangeable. So first I'm going to tell you the story of one of the worst friendship breakups I have ever experienced. And this happened, I met this girl after I graduated from college. I was living at home and then I was living with my ex-boyfriend's sister for a while. And I met her while we were working at a restaurant. And when I met this girl, to say I was impressed with her is an understatement. I was absolutely enamored with this woman. I am straight, uh, happily married. Um, I do have a large appreciation for women, but it was like a friendship love. I think that women fall in love with each other in friendship just like they fall in love in romantic relationships. So I fell in love with this woman. She was not only working at a restaurant, she also owned her own dance studio at the time and continues to own the studio to this day. She's very talented as a dancer, as a choreographer. Um, I'm going to not share a lot of the details of this so that uh, I can keep her identity private, but she owned her own dance studio and she was really, really a go-getter. She was waking up in the morning and going and teaching at the studio in the afternoon, working at the restaurant for lunch or dinner shifts. Uh, she was with an amazing guy. They were soulmates. They were totally in love. I was just, whoa, wowed by this woman. And so I started to hang out with her and I started to do the thing that I would do a lot where I would uh, when I would find somebody that I thought was really amazing, I would try to be their best friend. Like I wanted to be her best friend and I tried for that position like nobody's business. I was thoughtful, I was caring, I would make the plans, I would call her or text her first, I would, all the things. I would do the same things that she liked to do, um, just wanting to get in her world. And she did, she let me into her world. Um, you know, as long as I was the one doing all of the work, as long as I was the one texting and calling and being her hype man. Um, she used to say that about me. She used to say, you're the best hype man. Yeah, hype me up girl. Um, and I love a good hype girl, don't get me wrong, but both people should be hyping each other up. It shouldn't just be one-sided. And I would be there whenever she needed me, whenever she wanted me to be there, I would be there. I would move heaven and earth to be there. I met my current husband uh, while she and I were friends and um, she loved him, I mean, of course. So we started doing double dates and hanging out as couples and that created a whole new beautiful dynamic. I'm like, oh, this chair is new uh, and I, <laughs> I'm i gonna recover it with this purple velvet. I got it at Goodwill for like 13 bucks, but for now she's draped because I just got it yesterday. So I'm like, y'all don't need to see. Okay, this just real quickly. This is what it looks like. Ugh. 
it was beautiful. It was wonderful. She even uh, asked me to be a bridesmaid in her wedding. Uh, by the way, if you have ever gone through a friendship breakup, slap a like on this video. Let me know that you appreciate this storytelling style of these videos that I'm bringing for you. Um, I would really appreciate it. And also subscribe to my channel if both content around the ideas of developing your intuition and feeling confident in your decisions appeals to you and also learning about healing friendship wounds and attracting authentic friends. Subscribe. So it was awesome. And then things just continued to blossom. I was a bridesmaid in her wedding. I invited her to be a bridesmaid in my wedding. And uh, I thought that we were gonna be friends forever. I thought that I was going to be her best friend. It was so frustrating for me that no matter how close that I got to her, I still felt like she was keeping me at arm's length. Come to find out, I struggle with anxious attachment style and she struggled with avoidant attachment style. So we were just a match made in dysfunctional heaven. But I, I always felt like she kept me at arm's length and that's because she did, because she was avoidant. Um, and I was all, the typical anxious, always trying to get into her life, always trying to get around her and be around her. And so eventually when I started getting into spirituality, I started learning about chakras, I started learning about intuition, I started meditating, journaling, all the things, personal development, there was a little bit of a rift that started to grow because this friend would do the ghosting thing. She would ghost me. She did this uh, three different times during our friendship. We were friends for maybe even like five years that we were friends very close. Um, and on three separate occasions, she ghosted me and she would never tell me that she was mad at me or that something had happened or maybe there was some uncomfortable moment between us or something I had said that I would find out later, but she would not say anything. She wouldn't say anything at all for three weeks at a time. She would just completely ghost me. And um, I wonder, it just makes me wonder, like would things have ended between she and I like years earlier if I had never reached back out? Would I still have been in her wedding? Would she still have been in mine? Would she have just cut me out that easily? Maybe, who knows? I didn't find out right away because I would text her back. I would text her first. She would ghost me for like three weeks, wouldn't hear from her. And I would send her a text and say, hey, how's it going? Like you want to hang out? And then we would start hanging out again and things would be cool again. And, uh, you know, for like a good year or a couple years, and then something else would happen where, uh, there was a, an instance on her bachelorette party where she was, uh, going to be in a reality TV show or going to be in a pilot to see if they were going to make it into a show. And so we were at her bachelorette weekend in Charleston and, um, she like, invited these random guys like we were gonna go smoke some weed in the hotel room um and she invited some random guys to come smoke weed with us in our hotel room that she met in the elevator and she was telling them oh yeah i'm gonna be on down south dance i'm gonna be on this reality tv show you guys should check it out like fully fame whoring and I was like not feeling totally chill about the whole situation but I was like okay like she wants to smoke none of the other girls want to smoke so I'm gonna be her best friend and we're gonna go do this together because then she's gonna know like I'm her best friend uh because I fully support everything about her right Ooh. so we go back into the hotel room and then her cousin and other friends came back from that at that point and saw us in or either they the guys were leaving right when they came back anyway they found out the other girls found out that there were guys in our hotel room with us that night and yeah i mean it was not it was nothing happened there was nothing sexual that happened nothing weird there was no cheating it was just a lot of ego and and getting stoned that was a lot of what was going on all that was going on and so when we got back the next day i wasn't even thinking of it i wasn't like oh i shouldn't say anything i shouldn't tell the whole truth because my husband would be mad at me because i share everything with my husband and so we were sitting at the four of us me her her husband my husband and I was talking about the night and how it was so lame that the other girls didn't go smoke with us and how the guys, you know, come and hung out with us. And, and then her husband stopped me and was like, whoa, 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 wait, what? 
Um, and I didn't at that time realize that he was like jealous. And so he apparently didn't in front of us, but like got really, really mad at her. And there was like a whole, whole thing. And so after that happened, she ghosted me again. And uh, I, again, was so naive, like didn't even realize that, that I shouldn't be saying something, that I shouldn't be telling the truth, that, uh, that that would upset her, that that would upset him. And so another three weeks or even a month went by and I didn't hear from her. And I finally texted her again and was like, hey, what's going on? How are you? Let's hang out. Um, and I think at that point, the next time we'd hung out, she did actually say like, yeah, it really hurt me that you shared that. And I was, that you told him what we were doing. And I was kind of like, oh, like, I'm really sorry. Like, I didn't realize that I should have kept a secret from your husband. And so anyway, as I got into my spiritual awakening, it was something that she really was not cool with. She was really freaked out about it. And it's interesting because this happened maybe three or four years before spirituality became on trend and like celebrities started having crystals and talking about energy readings. And then there was human design and astrology and all these things started to become really popular and more mainstream and on trend about three or four years later. But when this was going on, when I was, I was starting to get into it, this was 2015. So it was still kind of taboo and she was not having it. She was not like a religious person by any means. And she loved to talk about like ghosts and like creepy stuff. And we talk about like aliens and different conspiracy theories and stuff. Um, but once I actually started getting really interested in like having my own thing, not just being all about her, she was totally freaked out. I mean, to be fair, I was changing a lot, a lot of my habits, a lot of my beliefs, the lens through which I saw the world, it was changing. And I was becoming a much more empowered person. I had boundaries. I was not chasing after her all the time. I was not just being her hype girl all the time. I was doing things for myself to make myself better, uh, a more lovable person, a less dysfunctional person. Um, but she wasn't the only one that freaked out. It also freaked out my husband, but I remember her talking about me and asking like, is she okay? Like, is she going crazy like about me? And that my husband was just like, yeah, like it's just a little bit intense. Like she's getting into all this spiritual stuff and I'm not sure what to do about it. And you know, uh, it was, it was very, very intense because I remember the last time I saw her in person, she, I think she maybe invited me. I don't know if she invited me or I invited her, but if she did, it was, it would have been a first, but we went to this Mexican restaurant together and I remember sitting down across from her and she said, hey, like, I, I feel like I don't know you anymore. Like, you know, what what is all this stuff that you're interested in? And, and I was trying to share with her and, you know, admittedly a little overzealous as you usually are at the beginning of any journey of something that you're going down a rabbit hole with, but just very excited to talk about chakras, to talk about energy healing, to talk about shadow work to talk about you know consciousness and meditation and all of these things that i was getting into and she looked terrified she looked like she had seen a ghost like she just had no idea who i was and yes a lot of like superficial things changed about me a lot of my interests changed and yes i became a more self-centered not in a selfish way but in an empowered way in a self-loving way person. I had my own things going on and I was stepping into my power. And uh, I don't remember if we hugged, but I, I remember just walking away from that lunch and just thinking like, hey, like I don't think I'm ever going to see her again. And lo and behold, that was the third and final time that she ghosted me. And this time I didn't reach back out. I didn't come crawling back. I was a more empowered person. I knew like, okay, if she's not supporting she doesn't have to be interested in or believe all the same things as me, but if she's not even gonna support this direction that I'm moving in, if she's gonna talk shit about me behind my back and uh, you know support my husband in potentially divorcing me, then this is not a friendship that is worth having. This is not a friendship that's worth holding on to. But I, you know, so now moving into this next part of the video, give this video a like if you've ever experienced a friendship breakup like this where 
you felt like you put so much into that relationship, so much effort and energy and time and love and attention into this other person. And the minute that you start to become your own person or the minute that you started to become more empowered or heal or change something about yourself, they were gone. Um, I'd love to hear about your experience in the comments and we can, we can discuss and move through this together because it was hard. It was really painful. I had tried so hard to show her how much I loved her, how much I cared about her. And was that really for her or was it for me? That is an interesting question. That is an interesting question for exploration with that anxious attachment style. Uh, you know, so maybe it was about me thinking that I was the best friend. I was a best friend and I was going to do everything in my power to behave like a best friend. Did I actually love her? Or did I love myself being such a good friend to her? I think it was a little of both, if I'm being honest. I think it's a, it was a little of both. There was definitely a little bit of, I'm, I'm such a good friend, I'm an amazing friend, I can say this, I can say that I'm friends with her because she's going somewhere. And I really did love her. And I really did care about her. I really did think that she was funny. I really did think that she was smart and that I was really proud of her for rising above a lot of situations in a very difficult upbringing to have the kind of success that she had. I was inspired by her and I really did love her. And that's why I think those two reasons are why it was so painful um, of a friendship breakup when she ghosted me and gave me no closure. And I know there's a lot of talk in friendship breakups or in breakups in general about closure, about needing closure, wanting closure. Um, but a teacher of mine, Annalie Howling said, you know, if somebody ghosts you, like that should be closure enough. Like if somebody disrespects you or doesn't have enough self-respect or respect for you in order to um, have a conversation with you where they tell you that they are not interested in being friends, um, then them ghosting you should be closure enough. That should be all you need to know. Like, why would you want to have a conversation with the person who ghosted you about why they ghosted you? Do you think that the person who ghosted you would be willing, have the self-respect or the respect for you to have a, a genuine, mature conversation with you about why they ghosted you? No. Um, and I don't think I ever really wanted that from her. I, I knew and I, I knew that I, what I was choosing and I knew that she had ghosted me before and I knew that from her reaction at that lunch that if I left and never said anything again, then that would be it. And I did not want closure, did not seek closure in that relationship, in that friendship. I just let her go. Now that doesn't mean that she didn't haunt my dreams for years after that. Um, as I was still working through my subconscious and working through all of the reasons why it triggered me so much that she was ghosting me and keeping me at arm's length. And so how I healed that, how I healed from that breakup, from that friendship breakup was doing shadow work, was the, it eventually ended up becoming the seven steps of shadow work that I share in my book, You Always Know. Uh, I didn't know it at the time that I was doing these steps. It was in hindsight when I looked back at my process and I saw, oh, okay, I can break this down into steps. That's one of my gifts is uh, creating frameworks, making frameworks about around things and making lists. Oh, must be my Virgo moon, Capricorn rising. Um, Gemini sun, in case you were wondering, and I don't care if we're considered the villain of the, uh, the um, zodiac. I love it. I love being a Gemini. I, I did develop a framework around it. So how I healed from this breakup was first, awareness. So awareness of the thing that I wanted to heal from, that I wanted to stop having her show up in my dreams because every time that would happen, I would wake up in a terrible mood. I would feel bad about myself. It would be a terrible start to the day. So that was first was to uh, have awareness around what I wanted to heal. Um, step two was intention. So set the intention for what I wanted to feel, that I wanted to feel worthy of a friendship that was reciprocal and not just one-sided, that I wanted to feel worthy and attract uh, somebody that was going to reciprocate in the relationship, somebody that was going to not ghost me, 
Um, so that was my intention. And my intention was also to look at the reasons why I attracted that friendship in the first place. And so when I take a look at those things, um, you know, I can get to the, the root of it. So the awareness and the intention was, you know, she would always talk shit about all of her other friends to me. So suffice it to say, she probably talked shit about me behind my back, even during those five years that we were really close. Um, and also the fact that she kept me at arm's length and ghosted me. So if I was being radically honest with myself when I took a look and then I asked myself, did I do those things? Did I ever do those things? Did I ever ghost somebody? Did I ever keep people at arm's length? Did I ever gossip about somebody behind their back? If I'm being radically honest with myself, the answer was yes. The answer was yes, that I used to behave that way, that I did those things, that I was a vibrational match for somebody treating me that way. And so that is what happened. That is what I attracted. You know, when you become, can become aware of your own dysfunctional behavior, uh, you know, when the things that trigger you, you realize that those are things that you do that you don't necessarily like about yourself or want to become aware about yourself, that is when the real growth happens. That is real shadow work, ladies and ladies, and the few gents who watch this channel, okay? Real shadow work is taking a look at the people who have traumatized you and seeing how you have done those things in your past. All right, so I took a look at that and then I allowed myself to, to look at the root of that. Why was I doing that? Why did I used to ghost people? Why would I gossip about people? A lot of it came down to lack of worthiness, not feeling worthy of having my needs met. So feeling like I'm going to do whatever it takes to be this person's best friend, do whatever it takes to have my needs met. I'll gossip. I'll smoke weed with them in a hotel room with strange men. I will do whatever it takes to show that I am worthy, to have that external validation from them being my friend to show that I am worthy, okay? So that, that unworthiness wound. Uh, and that, that would be the root of it. And then, you know, allowing myself to feel those feelings, allow myself to feel the shame that came along with those feelings, allowing myself to have catharsis, to cry, to ugly cry because of those things that I had participated in and that I was doing. So that was the long and the short of uh, what happened in the worst friendship breakup and how I healed it and what did I learn? I learned that shadow work is so important. I learned that I needed to be my own best friend in order to attract friends that saw me as a best friend. I learned that I needed to show up for myself and do my own thing and love doing my own thing and be okay with being alone for a while. Connecting with spirit, connecting with my spirit guides, connecting with my higher self, with the ascended masters. I am never alone. I am never alone. There is always guidance. There is always love available for me and for you. I learned that it is okay to hold space and that's what I want to say to you. If you're in a period where you are recognizing that you're outgrowing some of your friends or some of your friends have ghosted you or you are seeing that you want to continue to grow and you're afraid that you might outgrow some of your friends, that it is safe to hold space, to be in that void as you wait for those new friendships, those new relationships to start coming in, to do that healing work, to do the shadow work necessary because now I have amazing friends. I have two lifelong best friends, fully reciprocal. They reach out and ask me how I'm doing. I do the same for them. They're interested and inspired by me. I'm interested and inspired by them. It's beautiful. And I have many other friendships that are growing and blooming and blossoming and evolving as well. So even if you're in a space where it feels like things are bleak and the, the friendship well is dry, hold that space for yourself. Connect with yourself. Learn who you are on your own. Become a lovable person, someone that you love by healing those shadows, taking a look at those dysfunctional behaviors so that you can attract those authentic friendships. The ones that will grow with you. The ones that will not abandon you or avoid you or obsess over you. Maybe they'll obsess over you, but they'll be cool about it. <laughs> 
And if you want a ticket to beginning that journey, you need to take the intuition identity quiz links in the description below. You will find out the language that your intuition specifically uniquely is speaking to you. And then once you enter your email address, you will get a guide that teaches you the best way to interpret that language that your intuition is speaking to you for freaking free. Get it, get it description box. Okay. If you are an empath, check out these two videos right here and subscribe to my channel. I love you today and every day, and I will keep spilling the tea in the next video.